For the uninitiated and some former members, CrossFit can seem more like a strange cult than a gym. What if someone led a cult and they didn't know they were? So before we look at some of the reasons you may be wary of CrossFit, use that index finger muscle and click to subscribe to our channel. Just hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Fitness snobs. The novelist Alexander Thoreau said, hypocrisy is the essence of snobbery, but all snobbery is about the problem of belonging. The fitness lifestyle is about belonging to a culture that challenges you to improve your physical and mental well-being. However, for many CrossFitters, it seems to be about showing off and separating themselves from the herd so they can convince the rest of us they belong to an elite group. Of course, they define what elite fitness is, what any CrossFitter happens to be doing at any given time. Wait guys, I gotta pee. There's nothing wrong with doing pistol squats. Let's keep a little perspective. Being able to perform any particular exercise or workout doesn't necessarily make you a Delta Force or SEAL operator. Not to pick on pistol squats, but they're probably most useful as a warm-up for actual squats. The ability to perform pistol squats means you've used valuable training time to practice trendy movements like pistol squats, wall planks, and Spider-Man presses. Laughing with them? If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then the hilarious YouTube parodies of CrossFit might be the sincerest form of revenge against smug CrossFitters everywhere. The one thing that's bound to get you laughed at is taking yourself too seriously, and the CrossFit community has made an imperative out of taking itself too seriously. The parodies, jokes, and memes have continued to pile up over the years with such gusto and direct proportion with their inability to see the humor in themselves. The more they dig in their heels and respond with cliches more macho than the last, the more they confirm the stereotype. Hi, I'm Matt Best. You might know me from videos like How to Be a Douchebag. One thing to take your workout seriously while you're working out, but to embrace a form of cultural superiority because you train in a garage instead of a storefront gym is a bit absurd. Kip your hands to yourself. If you don't know what a kipping pull-up is, you're probably better off. So be warned, you're about to find out. Oh. You can think of the kipping pull-up, or kip, as a bastardization of the great pull-up exercise every gym rat knows and loves. The thing about pull-ups is they're hard. I'm dizzy, I just gotta... <laughs> this is why pulling your full body weight up to a bar until you touch your chest to it is considered a universal measure of fitness. It's why you had to do them in gym class and why the military insists on them. The kipping pull-up uses momentum, timing, and body English that expose your back and shoulders to unnecessary forces. If you know how to do them, you can work up to 50 or more. But it's sort of like doing half reps on the leg press machine with too much weight instead of squatting with a reasonable amount of weight in good form. The ability to perform a handful of strict dead hang pull-ups is infinitely more impressive and safer than dozens of loose kips. Shh. Don't tell anyone that. We don't need no stinking form. These ladies' workouts have gone sideways, and they were fortunate if they didn't hurt themselves. No! CrossFit has gained a reputation for pushing its members hard, perhaps harder than they'd ever worked before. Unfortunately, CrossFit also has a reputation for sending more than its share of business to chiropractors. People are ruthless out there. Really? Yeah. Exercises like the kipping pull-ups or Roman chair medicine ball throws are part of the problem, but there are others. An overemphasis on the Olympic lifts, the clean and jerk, and the snatch, especially when done for high repetitions as part of a circuit, can be a problem. The potential for injury is greatly increased when completing a set, even when loose form is encouraged. <coughs> Odd object lifting, whether it's with sandbags, kegs, or kettlebells, subject the body to unusual stresses that can wreak havoc on the neck, hips, and spine. There can be a place for odd object lifting in your routine, but prudence and caution are key. The other factor is intensity. While intense workouts are necessary for results, common sense must prevail or overtraining and injuries will be the results. Pay for the privilege. You get what you pay for is a cliche, but cliches persist because they contain an element of truth. If this is true about CrossFit, it's ultimately up to the members who fork over as much as $250 a month for the privilege of working out in a dank garage called a box. CrossFitters explain that they're paying for more than just access to the equipment, but an experience that includes camaraderie and an experienced coaching staff. Want you rest for a second? Do it again? Fair enough, but one can't help but think many of them pay up to $3,000 a year because they like to tell people, I don't work out, I CrossFit, or something like that. Gyms come in all shapes and sizes sizes and cost structures, but for most people, CrossFit costs too much. The CrossFit community implies that if the uninitiated knew what they were missing, they'd pay up. Alternatively, if you were as serious about your fitness as we are, you'd pay up. Both of these sentiments express an attempt at exclusivity or even an elitism that most won't sacrifice for to attain. I love to lift heavy things. When in a Roman, there are so many potential problems with Roman chair medicine ball throws. 
boom, you're on the floor. To start, it's a five word name for an exercise most people should never attempt. Most people who have worked out in a commercial gym have used some form of Roman chair bench to perform sit ups or back extensions. Correct form in the basic versions of these is important to avoid injury. But CrossFit isn't happy with basic. They like to kick it up a notch and combine a fast, ballistic-style movement with an exaggerated range of motion while tossing a medicine ball as far as possible. You don't have to be a chiropractor to see that RCMBTs are fraught with danger. Besides, they're completely unnecessary since there are plenty of abdominal exercises to choose from, such as weighted crunches, a much safer and much saner option. As an event in CrossFit competitions, it just seems like an invitation to injury. It, it's gonna hurt. Fitness is sport. CrossFit's slogan is the sport of fitness. Convincing people that working out is a sport was marketing gold. Professional CrossFitters with corporate sponsors compete in competitions aired on ESPN. For decades, critics of bodybuilding derided the idea that the activity is a sport, comparing it to beauty pageants. Does anybody have a hairband? These critics pointed to powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting as legitimate sports, and CrossFitters make the case that they are part of this Iron Game tradition. The problem is both powerlifting and weightlifting require years of focus work to master specific skills. These lifters must train consistently over a relatively long period to achieve the strength and power to be competitive athletes. Any reasonably fit person could at least complete most CrossFit workouts without special instruction, except for the Olympic lifts, which helps make the case for their unique nature. Sports require the acquisition and refinement of specific skills that CrossFit lacks. No doubt CrossFit competitors are better at CrossFit than most everyone else, which makes them very fit. But does that make CrossFit a sport? Ooh, cute. Is that Lululemon? If it's not on Facebook, the joke is, if it's not on Facebook, it didn't happen. Except anyone familiar with social media knows it's not really a joke. Everyone posting the zillionth picture of their angry, sad, glad, grumpy cat, or liking your Facebook friend's latest recipe for gluten-free lilac crumpets are to blame. However, millennials, particularly crossfitting millennials, seem to confuse the everyday moments of life with sweeping historical events worthy of documentation. Guys, why is the wand not up? The WOD is a major focus of the CrossFit social media presence, allowing enthusiasts to post photographs, videos, quotes, and captions, all apparently meant to leave the rest of us in awe of how unbelievably hard CrossFit is. Yeah, it looks like fun. It's not really the sheer volume of the social media assault, although that is an issue. The real problem is the grasping plea for public validation that what they're doing is not only the right way, but the best way. Scaling Mount Olympus. Olympic weightlifting has a long and distinguished history, and although it's relatively unpopular as a sport in the US, the lifts have enjoyed a resurgence through college and professional sports training programs and through CrossFit. The clean and jerk and the snatch are two lifts not to be taken lightly. Correct technique for the bench press and even the squat can be picked pretty quickly, but the Olympic lifts are fast lifts that demand rigorous attention to technique or the forces generated will bite back. Although many CrossFitters learn good technique, it's obvious from their social media presence that many Many have not. Oh yeah, good call, okay. Even if they have learned proper form, it can quickly break down when performing multiple high repetition sets as part of a circuit, leaving you vulnerable to injury. The overemphasis on the Olympic lifts and the various assistance lifts carries quite a bit of risk for the average trainee who is not a competitive athlete. Oh, oh no, oh no. Heart of Glassman. Greg Glassman is a former personal trainer who was hired to develop fitness programs for the Santa Cruz Police Department. The tough, unconventional workouts were a big hit with the officers and word quickly spread. As the founder and CEO of the multi-million dollar CrossFit brand, Mr. Glassman oversees a decentralized fitness empire with boxes spread all over the world. You like money with the fastest growing large chain on earth. He has a cadre of lawyers ready to defend his brand against any interlopers, but no longer trains with CrossFit himself. The reason for this curious fact is unclear and has not gone unnoticed by some of his followers, who have discussed it on social media. Although, it doesn't appear to have dampened their enthusiasm to continue to CrossFit. You don't like being told what to do. Oh, I don't mind being told what to do, I just won't do it. Send in the clowns. It's not a goof. The CrossFit logo features a character called Pukey the Clown. The muscular mascot reminds devotees that the puke bucket is always at hand. <laughs> But if Pukey's not intense enough for you, get a load of Uncle Rabdo, a clown who's contracted rhabdomyolysis. This is a serious and potentially life-threatening syndrome where damaged muscle tissue can leak into the bloodstream. It's a completely avoidable condition that only proves the trainee has taken things too far. This choice of mascot is curious in that it draws attention to a negative consequence of training very hard. But CrossFitters apparently don't see it as a negative. It's more like a rite of passage into the cult of CrossFit and a reminder that they're elite athletes. Everything's just falling apart, and who cares? 
It's just kind of <sighs> have a bit of fun out there, right? Uncle Rabdo is even less defensible than Pukey because rhabdomyolysis isn't funny in any context. How you feel, man? How you feel? Great. I feel like I'm gonna puke. Train to the test. Many coaches and military testers will admonish their charges to train to the test. They're referring to the concept of specificity. If you want to improve your mile run, you have to tailor a running program. If you want to increase your bench press, you have to get serious about benching. CrossFit's strength and its weakness is that it's specifically generalist. CrossFitters' training energies are spread over a wide variety of exercises, modalities, and workouts. Variety can be a good thing, especially for people who would otherwise get bored with their routines. However, variety for the sake of variety can merely dissipate your limited training time and recovery ability. Just fatigued. The goal of CrossFitters is to be the fittest on earth. This is an ambitious but general goal that means different things to different people. Training for the CrossFit Games is more specific, but most CrossFitters don't compete at that level. Most people who work out aren't professional or even amateur athletes training for a particular sport. However, the more you can focus your training around specific goals and concrete benchmarks of progress, the more likely it is you'll see real improvements. Oh yeah. Oh, that was a blast. I like to do that again. What's in a name? Subcultures like the business world, academia, and militaries embrace specialized vocabularies, abbreviations, and acronyms to one degree or another. Oh my god. Militaries use it for efficiency, to disseminate a lot of necessary information in as brief a time period as possible. Sometimes, though, an over-reliance on jargon is an attempt at exclusivity, a way of affirming the group as separate from outsiders. Scientology comes to mind as an example of an exclusive organization that relies heavily on jargon to help create a subculture. Ah, uh, is a wad gonna be? Up. CrossFit also comes to mind. There are the standard ones, such as ATG for ass to grass, which instructs the trainee to complete full squats. However, there are the less familiar ones, such as YBF for you'll be fine, and IF for intermittent fasting, and AMRAP for as many reps as possible. There is a slightly mysterious item known as MEB, which means maximum effort black box. On the upside, CrossFit features special benchmark sessions known as hero workouts. There is a particularly tough workout named after a fallen Navy SEAL called the MRF. Oh, there we go. That was hell. The doctor will see you now. Just about all sports and forms of exercise present some level of risk of injury. Running is hard on the back and knees. Weight training exposes joints to shearing forces. It's all right, I'm sore every day. You're sore, I'm sore like this in training too, so. Most people attempt to mitigate the risks with attention of proper form, avoiding overtraining, and some common sense. CrossFit doesn't appear to value these factors as highly as it should. Anecdotal evidence suggests CrossFitters make up a disproportionately high percentage of trainees seeking chiropractic treatment. There is nothing macho or funny about making light of potentially serious injuries and medical conditions. Everyone who works out has heard the phrase no pain no gain, or in CrossFit parlance NPNG, but this is not a license to be stupid. A certain amount of perseverance and mental toughness is required to train hard consistently, but encouraging, even celebrating people pushing to the limits of health and safety, that's something else. I'm trying everything I can to be able to straighten my arms. Just do it. Millions of people love to work out, and a lot of them train very hard and have considerable success. Even more important than the physical rewards that come from consistent, hard training is the satisfaction of a challenge met and the pleasure of hard work well done. But if we make too much of all this, if we elevate a passion into an imperative, aren't we in danger of sucking the enjoyment out of training? After all, 99% of us will never be professional athletes, so why all the posing as if their lives depend on their WOD? Oh, it's devastating. Man, that hurts my heart. Police officers, firefighters, and soldiers risk their lives for us, but no matter how grueling the WOD, CrossFitters won't be making the ultimate sacrifice. So why so much reliance on attention-getting acts of bravado and comparisons to a warrior ethos? Does CrossFit make them tougher than the rest of us? Who knows? But they seem to be trying awfully hard to convince us that they are. No need to convince us that you're tough. Just hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. That's it for now. Don't forget to check out our other videos. Goosebumps again. <laughs>